Hey everybody, here's a special video because there's some big news that broke yesterday. Um, Tesla is opening their charging standard. So it is now going to be called the North American Charging Standard. And uh, let's, let's get into what that means. So currently we have really three types of plugs here in North America. And for this whole video, I'm gonna be talking about North American charging stuff since that's what this uh, is talking about. Here in North America, the most popular non-Tesla plug is CCS. That's what I have in my Bolt. Um, and then we still also have Chademo, which is really just a um, legacy older, uh, older EVs, Nissan Leafs, the Mitsubishi iMeve, if that's still a thing. I think some old Kias, maybe like a Kia Nero. Anyway, it's for, for older electric vehicles. They are still out there, but those Chademo chargers are getting harder and harder to find. And then of course we have Tesla, which is now renamed North American Charging Standard. So I'll just call it NAX from here on out. And apparently according to Tesla, if we look over here, um, this is from Tesla's blog. According to Tesla, Tesla Supercharging Network has 60% more NAX posts than all CCS equipped networks combined. Which, you know, it'd be great if some other source can verify that. Just from driving around and seeing supercharger stations compared to, let's say, Electrify America or EVgo, I would believe that. Um, usually supercharger sites have way more stations than some place like uh, EVgo or Electrify America. All right, and let's talk about that name. Uh, you know, they probably could have just called it the Tesla plug. I feel like they're trying to not have a brand associated with that. So if they just call it the North American Charging Standard, there is no mention of Tesla there. And, and years down the line, you know, people, kids who are now, let's say seven, in 10 years when they get their license, they probably won't even know that that was the Tesla plug. They'll probably just know it as the electric vehicle plug. And then I think there's probably some psychology, psychological stuff going on with that name. Um, just trying to hint that, yes, this is the North American charging standard. Even though it's not in any sort of official capacity, they might have more chargers out there in the world right now, but uh, they are not officially the North American charging standard. How that comes to be, I don't know if the SAE is the institution that could make that the official charging standard. That seems to be right, but that's just a guess. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is a new thing and a uh, new name. Let's look at some of the advantages that we might get from having Max as the standard. So the cable is lighter, both in the um, plug itself and the cable. So if we look over here, I'm guessing that this here is to scale. Seems about right, um, but yeah, if you you know if you're new to EVs, if you don't have an EV, the CCS plug is pretty bulky. It's not super heavy, um, but it's it is bulky. It's kind of cumbersome, and you know I've only really driven Teslas when I rent them, but it is a much nicer experience with that plug. So uh, yeah, we got lighter stuff, fewer materials because the plug is so much smaller. It's going to take, you know, less plastic to uh, manufacture that plug. Also, the cable itself is um, a smaller diameter than the CCS, so fewer materials going into that too. The plug will be able to take up to a thousand volts. Right now, there are very few cars that can take um, 800 volt architecture, I guess. I think Porsche is one of the few that can do that. So this is kind of future proofing. Right. Oh, who knows how much faster things are going to get. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out. Another advantage, non-Teslas will easily be able to use the supercharger network. Tesla was talking about opening the supercharger network to all EVs, um, but that would require an adapter, you know, CCS to Tesla plug adapter. You know, if all cars start having the NAX plug, then there's no adapter needed. And then also another advantage, Teslas can now easily use any network. They can basically use any network now. Tesla does have an official uh, CCS adapter for their NAX plug, uh, but that is an extra cost and it's kind of an extra pain to put in that adapter. So it'll just make it easier to charge. All right, let's look at some disadvantages, possible disadvantages. Um, cars that are in the pipeline right now are not gonna have the new plug. You know, it takes, from what I understand, it could take five years from an inception of a car to production. This is with major established auto manufacturers. 
So, you know, you're not, we're not going to see this happening right away, at least with legacy automakers. So yeah, it will take years to adopt this for legacy. Now, maybe with companies like some cars that I've covered in the past, like Aptera, well, Aptera, we're gonna get to them in a, in a little bit. Um, like Nimbus, maybe they, it's not too late for them to change their design to incorporate NAX instead of CCS. Same with Sono, Sono's not in production yet, so maybe they will change theirs for the uh, North American market. Um, and then another disadvantage, charging stations are gonna have to retrofit their current station. So I know Electrify America has put in their new, I don't know which version, version two of their charging stations, um, which, you know, majority have CCS plugs. So those are gonna have to be swapped out. Um, the good thing is, I'm, this is just a guess, I, I'm guessing it's not as hard to just swap the cable and the plug as it would be to swap an entire station, right? So. Yes, it would cost more, cost them more money. It's gonna take time to do that, but at least it'll be cheaper than installing a whole entire station. Okay, now is it is it too late to change? You know, electric cars have been around for a while now. Um, I've been driving all electric since 2014, so for me, it feels like, you know, this is kind of late to the game, right? Well, apparently, only one percent of U.S. cars are electric now. I was under the impression it was a little bit bigger. I thought it was about 4%, but from what I'm finding on the internet, Car and Driver here uh, says, currently it's estimated around 1% of the 250 million cars, SUVs, and light duty trucks on American roads are electric. I'm wondering though, if they're also counting plug-in hybrids, which doesn't really matter in this, the case of DC fast charging, because I don't think any plug-in hybrids have DC fast charging here. Fun little note in Japan, the Prius Prime actually has DC fast charging on it, but we didn't get that here. So yeah, anyway. Um, also from this website, Treehugger, they have that same 1%. And these are all from this year. So this article was January, 2022. Car and Driver was from August, 2022. And then um, Reuters also has that 1%. Those of you that are really good at research, maybe you can look into it and let me know if this is correct. Either way, look, we're still in the very beginnings of electric vehicles. Here in California, you see EVs everywhere all the time. We have the most amount of EVs in the entire United States. So to me, it seems like it's too late, but if you're in a state that has hardly any EVs, you know, CCS, Chatamo, Nax, it, does, it doesn't matter because you're not seeing this stuff around anyway. So no, I don't believe it is too late. We are at the beginning. So changing from CCS to Nax now, I think is a good idea. All right, now will auto manufacturers switch? That's, that's the big thing, right? Because sure, Tesla might be able to say, here, use this plug. This plug is better. You can use it for free, which I'm assuming it doesn't sound like they're wanting any sort of uh, royalties to use this plug, but I don't know. If nobody picks it up, then it doesn't really matter, right? So this is just my guess. These are just my thoughts. I think American and Korean cars will adopt it. I'm kind of surprised at how Ford and Chevy are pretty on the bandwagon with EVs. Um, you know, Ford's F-150 has a lot of really cool tech in it, which I unfortunately wasn't you know, wouldn't give credit to American car manufacturers to be uh, kind of ahead of the game like that, but they are, and that's great. So I, I think there's a good chance American car manufacturers will adopt it. And same with the Koreans, their, their EVs, the Hyundais and Kias are, they're killing it. They're doing really well. And I wouldn't be surprised if they agree that the plug is superior to CCS and for their North American <clears throat> cars, they would change, but you know, just my guess. For the nose, definitely the Japanese. You know, I, I'm i half Japanese and I'm sad to say that the Japanese are really dragging their feet when it comes to electric vehicles. Now, um, Honda is, I think, quietly shifting to EVs. You know, they have, they have their prologue coming out soon. They already have the Honda E in Europe, which I think looks like a really cool car. I would love to drive it, but it's not available here. We all know Toyota is really kicking and screaming to get into the battery electric vehicle segment. And that can be a whole other video, but yeah, I think the Japanese, if they do adopt it, it's gonna be a very, very long time from now. The Europeans are really kind of a maybe for me. 
I don't have a good reason why. <laughs> That's just my gut feeling. If we start having NACs as the standard here in America, definitely I think they will go with it. If it's kind of on the fence, I don't know. I can, I can see Audi just sticking to CCS. And finally, those of you guys that know Aptera and have seen my videos about Aptera, we all know that their prototypes have had the NAX connector or the NAX port this whole time. And if you remember, if you watch this video <laughs> um, where I said I overheard Chris Anthony say that they will have the Tesla plug, I think I'm right. Um, I think what I overheard was correct. So, you know, maybe that was a slip of the tongue that he was saying, I don't know. But uh, it looks like the Aptera is going to have the NAX plug with it, which is great. You know, it would be great to use a supercharger network. It'd be great to just be able to use the light and, I don't know, much more enjoyable plug. What do you guys think? Do you guys think this is a big deal? Is this something that's just whatever? If you currently have an EV, how do you feel about this? Because I know with my Bolt, you know, I have CCS. If all the chargers end up changing to the NAX plug, Am I going to have to get an adapter? Am I even going to have the car long enough to worry about that? Who knows? Love to hear your thoughts, whether you have an EV now or you're thinking about getting one. And if you have any questions about this video or have things to add, this is still pretty new. And admittedly, I'm not the greatest at doing deep dive research. So I know Tesla fans out there, man, some of you guys are really in tune with all things Tesla. So if there's something that I said that wasn't right, let me know. And if you can push me towards the source of that. So I'm gonna have a link to the things that I showed today. Um, you know, you can check out the Tesla blog here. Tesla also has available very in-depth contents, a scope of the whole connector thing. So you can look into that if you want to, but I will have links to all the things that I showed today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.